Hello and welcome back to Live Coding with Me. Uh, we are working on creating some LCD display. So you can pause it and do a quick read on that. But what we got to last time is we have all nine, all ten, all ten digits represented by their correct LCD representation. Uh, and what we need now is we need multi digits because clearly this is not going to work. What we have for multiple character, multiple numbers. We, we're not going to do if input for everything. That wasn't the intent. So this set us up pretty well. So let's go ahead and. create a method and we're going to go backwards here. Let's just do 10. Let's actually just go up a digit. Interesting. It's, inter it's an interesting idea. I mean, we can, but it'll, it'll show us something. That, that's what I want. I want it to show us something. And we are actually, <laughs> uh, this doesn't work like I thought. This is the fun part. So I want to just concatenate digits, which is why I started off with each digit. That doesn't work. Because what I expect in this case is three digits. And that's what I expect. So to give a real quick, to give a real quick, it actually I don't want that one. Ah, do I want that? Oh right, 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 right. It should look like this. That's what I want. Four ten. Um, but without the uh, Neil on there. <clears throat> okay, so how do I, how do I do that? I don't know. So what my, my first thought on this is I need a top row, middle row, and bottom row configuration for each digit. Because then I'm thinking I can go um, digit top. Plus, well, first digit top. Let's just call first digit. Top uh, plus second. Top plus new line. We'll ignore the new line for now. And do the first digit mid plus. Mid and the first digit bottom plus the second digit bottom. And I mean, as we get more digits, we keep just chaining the, the top, middle, and bottom to it. Which, yeah, yeah, that, that, uh, that seems more effective because it's. It's a string, so unless we start doing inserts at anyway, uh, it's substring, insert, substring, yeah, that is, that is hacky. Interesting, actually, because we don't need to know all the digits all the time. So I can do this, but I have. And so pairing, momming, these kind of discussions are great. We have an approach. We have three rows, so we can do, this is one approach. Let's call this. Approach one, right? Pretty cool, right? Um, approach two, maybe we have a uh, um, set the first digit because the first digit is never going to need to add anything. And then the next digit um, at Index three. 
uh, with some off by one possibility. Uh, yeah, at index three, we're going to insert um, second digit substring from zero to three. Zero to three. And then, so this is all for the next digit. For you, we're going to take that in at the index there. Um, at index six, like seven, because we're going to have some characters in there. Some index, I'm not sure which, depending on how the uh, system uses new lines. Uh, insert. We're going to insert the second digit substring of four to seven, four, five, six, four, six, four, six. Four, six. I don't know the exact number. We'll, we'll get we'll get to that. And really, uh, I'm just going to say this for now because we let's recognize that there are new lines that we don't know about. Now let's put about on these, about seven to the end. So it doesn't matter. So that's, that's another approach uh, challenge here. Well, I mean, at index of first new line. At index of second new line. And this is at the index of uh, it's actually at the end of the string. At the end of the string is where we insert the second digit substring of the last set. So it's interesting. The second approach. I mean, kind of that's approach 2A and approach 2B, depending on which way you want to look at it. Uh, we have to do less numbering around that. We can actually do it combined. Where we actually, instead of doing substrings, we use the second digit top, second digit bottom, and that will actually show us You know, this would be instead of substring, we do top. I would say top or substring. And we do mid or substring. And we do bottom or substring. So this is actually a couple different ways we could be doing this. I I kind of like, uh, I like them both. I like approach one for the simplicity of the code. We're just going to be getting all the digits and then adding up all the components, which nice and simple. But uh, approach two, we are we don't care about what the previous or next digit is. We only care about the digit we're, the digit that we are operating on. And I think that's important. I think that it's very valuable to be able to be ignorant about the rest of the system. So. There are there, there's value in all of these because really on approach one we're going to have to figure out what all the digits are, gather them up, store them in some process, iterate through them, um, and through their components. So we have to have a loop of it. It, it I think while conceptually much cleaner, but I mean as obvious by the less comment code or comments that I had to write for it. I think it is going to be programmatically a little more challenging to track everything involved. So I think while it looks a little more complex, that approach number two is actually going to be simpler. So what I'm going to do is say those are our ideas. And because we're at 10 minute mark, and really we wrote nothing, but this has been a great discussion. And 
kind of the, the point of this live coding is how do how do senior engineers, professional engineers, you know, how do the experienced engineers work? Honestly, like this, I don't know what to do next. What are some options? So that's what we did today. We went, I don't know what to do next. What are some options? And it kind of went through two major options with, and the second one has a few subsets, a few variations, a few flavors to it, which I find often the things with that I can vary quickly like that. Well, instead of an index, we do a new line. Instead of a substring, we just break it into components. That kind of flexibility hints at it's a better path forward because if I'm not right, if, if there's something I want to refine, it's going to give me more options. I mean, clearly just think, just the thinking through it, I have options. Where with approach one, I don't really have options. It's kind of what it is. And I like flexibility because I don't have a full plan of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to stop today's here. We are waiting on renaming this. Whew, going to rename this. There we go. We should return an LCD for 10. We are broken. It didn't do what I, it didn't uh, fall in place like I was originally expecting. I expected just to be able to do something like CD1 plus LCD0. That is what I expected to do. Let me go ahead and throw a breakpoint here. Um, Okay, breakpoints, where are you at? F9 break, F9 is a breakpoint, fabulous. All right, let's go ahead and debug this. No, I don't want to debug all. I'm actually going to run this using ReSharper uh, just because it's quicker. I don't know where it is on a <laughs> MS test structure. So. It's shifting the display around. Don't worry about that. Uh, running unit tests, debugging. Oh yeah, what is example? Example is, let's go and look at this. Right, the example is one concatenated with zero. It is not putting them together. So it is looking exactly like I expected. Very, very broken. All right, so. It is very, very broken, which is what I expected. I'm going to take off our breakpoint now. And yeah, we will see what we can do about that next time. All right. Thank you for listening and hear me next time.